need to get to the Super Bowl. You don't do that. Jordan Love ain't never going to play. But look where we at. And now I'm sitting here hollering at you guys. <laughs> but I can't holler at Gruden Coach. That's, what, that's all I have to say. Thank y'all for taking my call. Go, Pat, go! There's a lot of unknowns going into this offseason now. And I just, I'm going to have to take some time away for sure and, and clear my head and just kind of see what's going on with everything. But it's, uh, it's pretty tough right now, especially thinking about the guys that may or may not be here next year. There's always change. That's the only constant in this business. It's really tough to get to this point. Really, really tough. Boy, that is uh that's just a shame. Boy, that's just Darn. really that's just really sad for, uh, for the Packers. Boy, yeah. that that's really reminiscent of another former Packer quarterback. I'm trying to put my finger on it. Uh, who the heck oh, was Don what, Mikowski, what was yeah. it? No, Don no, Mikowski. it was I think it was after Mikowski, maybe Matt Flynn. Um, Matt Flynn was very wishy washy. Nah, yeah. No, nah, it wasn't him. Seneca it, this, Wallace. This was a guy was it Seneca Wallace? Oh, no, Matt Hasselback. <laughs> Matt Hasselback? Oh, yeah. No, you know who it was? It was Mark Brunell. Brunell. Yeah, that oh, guy was wait. up. But yeah. so this guy would be the same way, and he eventually got really frustrated and retired. But then he didn't stay retired. Do you remember? And this? then he went. Where did he go? He oh the jet no the Jets. Oh yeah, the he Jets. went to the yeah, Jets. And then what was, happened after that? Yeah, but then he then he went oh, somewhere Oh, hold else. on a second. I remember. Yeah, he went to um. Oh, what's that team that plays in the same division as the Packers? Detroit. No, it wasn't no, Detroit. No, it's not Detroit, man. No, it wasn't no, the, no, not, not Detroit, Detroit, man. It's the Super Bowl. Not Detroit. This is not Detroit. <laughs> um. Oh, I know who it was. It was the Minnesota Vikings. Oh. But you're going to kick a stupid field goal at the end of the game? Who are y'all talking about? And then this regular season nonsense, just like the Bucks. I don't care about the Packers winning during the regular season. All our team is at this point to me is just a paper team during the season. It's garbage. The floor got exposed. Rodgers got exposed. Rodgers cannot win the big damn game. He's a buck. <laughs> Go, Pat, go! Inject it all into my veins. You know, I've, yes. been, I've been saying that since 2008. Just bench him. <laughs> just bench him. Uh, just, just, just make him, make him sit on the bench and think about what he's done. So, uh, as you can tell, plenty of Packer vent line, courtesy of our friends on the fan in Milwaukee on today's show. In fact, we got a bunch of things we'd like to talk about. We may also just run like an hour straight of Packer vent line and back off the mics ourselves. We haven't decided yet. Uh, so plenty to dissect and discuss. Plenty of things to uh, sort of twist and turn as they apply to the Vikings. A quick shout out to Federated Mutual Insurance Company. They've been helping business owners in the state of Minnesota for over 100 years, based in Owatonna. Uh, and they've also recently launched My Shield, which is your online client destination for risk management resources. As a business owner out there, how helpful would it be for you to have employee training at your fingertips? Industry resources that can help your business reach another level of success. That's where Federated and MyShield come in. Find out more at federatedinsurance.com where you can get registered or you can download the app as well uh, or talk to your local Federated marketing representative. Remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. TCL is a proud sponsor of the Score North Studios. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL. These two guys have Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. I had Tampa Bay 2110. You can check the tapes. And You're right on that. Thank do you, you think this is like a dream team comparison? Who's that? Tampa Bay. Go, Pat, go! Okay, oh my, my, gu my guess oh my is God. that guy is at point zero one eight. Oh, and no, no, no. Hold on, <laughs> two five. I think he wakes up a point yeah. zero, a point zero something. Man, I okay. Ordinarily, I don't, I don't like get a ton of day to day joy out of rivals of Minnesota sports teams failing. I think it's just like the way that it happened yesterday, the justification of some Packers fans. And then Aaron Rodgers, can we play this clip again? Aaron Rodgers just pouring f gas all over the fire. Because, I mean, as insecure as Vikings fans are about never winning a Super Bowl and and kickers missing key kicks and 
always having a, re- a revolving door of quarterbacks. Packers fans put on a little bit of a false bravado, like, well, we have Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre, and Favre left you for the Vikings. Almost won a Super Bowl here. And then Aaron Rodgers says this yesterday. There's a lot of unknowns going into this offseason now. And I just, I'm going to have to take some time away for sure and, and clear my head and just kind of see what's going on with everything. But it's, uh, it's pretty tough right now, especially thinking about the guys that may or may not be here next year. There's always change. That's the only constant in this business. It's really tough to get to this point. Really, really tough. Oh, sorry, buddy. That's the most Farvinian I've ever seen him be, and it's absolutely great because of one thing. So the, the day after the draft when they took Jordan Love in the first round, so the Friday after the first round, a lot of us rightfully so said, hold on a second, a franchise that should be chasing Super Bowls for its its Hall of Fame star quarterback just mm-hmm. drafted his replacement. They didn't draft a receiver in, by the way, let me remind you, a first round that had probably four really, if not five, quality guys, okay? So we all rightfully said at the time, this seems really dysfunctional. Like, what are you doing? Why are you not trying to help a guy who who is at a point in his life and age where he needs to be year to year chasing Super Bowl titles? Not like, oh, let's be good. Um, and then as the Packers got off to a good start and had a really good season, you know, I started to get occasional tweets about, well, hey, how about your thoughts then, huh? Packers look pretty good, not dysfunctional, right? This, what we saw with the fourth down and and with, I don't know how, the coach and the quarterback not being on the same page as to what they would do on fourth down. And then the quotes that we just played or the clip that we just played from Rodgers was the ultimate callback. It was the ultimate callback to, to basically the script that we had all felt was there for the 2020 season. And so it was fantastic to see because it's like, no, this is what we were talking about. This is what we were talking about. And this is definitely a guy who I think rightfully so looked across the field and saw a 43-year-old QB who's being allowed to chase Super Bowls now. Like, it's a, it, it's on. It's a one year, I'll go where I want to chase. And he's like, hold on a second here. Eight-yard line, fourth down. We're not going to get the ball back, and you kicked a field goal. dude. It was the – but, I mean, did, Phil, didn't this, like, bring it – Full circle completely. Yes. From draft night. Yes. It, I, I mean, one of the first thoughts I had as soon as they kicked that field goal, and then and then again watching him in that post game press conference, my first thought was Aaron Rodgers deserves better than what Green Bay has given him over the years, and my second thought was, and Minnesota would love to give that to you at some point <laughs> if you're open to it. If you're open to finishing hey, what Brett Favre started, <laughs> you up? You, you, you up, up, Aaron? <laughs> Rick Spielman. So say, because he hasn't been great all the time in these key situations. You know, he's not a great fourth quarter comeback quarterback. Um, he certainly he certainly wasn't great in the second half. You know, I, I think his completion percentage in the second half was right around or below 50%. Uh, fourth quarter and part of the third quarter. So he So he's not... It's not like he's compl- he's not Superman and everything else around him is always garbage. You know, it's it's more nuanced than that. But if you put yourself in his shoes, going back to last year's draft, not even counting the fact that they stuck with Mike McCarthy probably four years too long, and they rarely made big splashes in free agency to to fortify their team. If you just if you throw all that stuff out and all that stuff's debatable too, you've got one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, maybe the most talented quarterback of all time, going into like the last three year stretch maximum of of high the, like you can probably guarantee until he's 40 he's going to be one of the best players in the NFL and then all bets are kind of off maybe he looks like Tom Brady after 40 maybe he looks more like Drew Brees or Brett Favre we don't know yet and they draft a freaking replacement for him in the first round coming off a 13 and 3 season mm-hmm. and he had to spend the entire offseason taking the high road drinking brown alcohol and and calling friends every night to basically talk him off the ledge he gets over that egregious mistake mentally, goes back to camp. He mentors to whatever degree he can, Jordan Love. He buries the hatchet. 
and they go through this season without whatever the weapon would have been in the first round in, you know, interior defensive line, like whatever the weapon would have been right. that they could have gotten right. aside from Jordan Love. Right. Could it have been a Justin Jefferson? Like what, what, what could they have gotten if they had decided we're going to trade up a few spots and then they get to the biggest game of the season against Tom Brady and it's fourth down and goal from the eight or the nine yard line. You have to score a touchdown to keep the game going. And his coach kicks a field goal and cites analytics and cites, well, if you if we get a stop and get the ball back, you are facing Tom Brady. Yep. Tom well, Brady. And and despite the fact that Brady didn't play well and he did not in the second half of that game, you also have your defense. Mm-hmm. That Packers defense doesn't scare anybody. It's not Correct. very good. And so you're basic. I mean, I, I don't care if the opposing QB is Steve Dills with that defense. I'm not giving the ball back. I've got one. I've got one transcendent player on my sideline. It's Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Devontae is good too, but Aaron Rodgers is my guy. He's my Hall of Fame. He's my crystal that I've got on the shelf that I don't touch, right? Yeah. And I'm like, hold on a second. I think my defense is going to get the ball back. Yeah. But 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 in coming full circle last night, <laughs> this day, Monday, January what? 25th. 25th. Okay. Monday, January 25th, 2021, in the year of our Lord is a glorious day. <laughs> if you're a Vikings fan. Like this was a major step with how with how he sounded, and I think that Rodgers is probably back because of potential salary cap implications. Yeah, he'll be back next season. But with where he's at mentally, January twenty fifth, two thousand twenty one, mark it down. If you're a Vikings fan, it was a very important day in in your biggest rival, who since nineteen ninety two. So I mean, we're going on thirty years has had a Hall of Fame QB starting. You took a major step between draft night and last night, a major step towards Jordan Love being your competition. Think about that for a second. Yeah, if I, you're a Vikings fan, that's the best news that you got, including any wins that you got in 2020. I think he's back next year. But I also think, and I, and I think he was playing it up a little bit with those comments. I, th- I think... I think he was trying to send some shots at the front office for sure. I, th- I think that's his way of saying, well, I don't know, who, you know, we don't know who's going to be back and who's not. And, you know, if, if you could finish his sentence and, and, you know, give some, give some truth serum to him, I think he would say, you know, I mean, who knows what we're going to do in the draft. Well, look, what we did last year. We didn't do anything. We drafted a quarterback and a backup running back with our first two picks. Mm-hmm. And they weren't helping us much in that game against the Buccaneers. <laughs> nope. Unless Jordan Love is a master at deciphering all 22 film and uh, and being an assistant coach on the sidelines, probably eating hot dogs. So I, I think I think he's hamming it up a little bit on that front. I think he knows he's going to be back unless he decides to retire. But I also think this is the furthest he's gone mentally, divorcing himself from the Packers. I think his his disdain for how that game ended, and and his and just like here's let's play the other clip, Declan. This is him being asked about the ball being taken out of his hands. Fourth down, Super Bowl on the line, and you guys kick a field goal and give the ball back to the greatest quarterback of all time with two minutes left, and you thought that was going to work? Aaron, did you agree with the decision to kick it there on fourth down? I didn't have a decision on that one. Um, Yeah, that wasn't my decision, but I understand the thinking above two minutes with – all of our timeouts, but yeah, that wasn't my decision. He's, he's definitely, he's definitely leaning into the bad feelings in this case, but I, I don't think it's fake. I think, I I think in his mind, he legitimately is having thoughts about, I don't know if I want to play here anymore. I don't know if they've given me enough support over the last 12 years. And I don't know if I want to do it for another year. And the answer is probably consistently. No, Uh, I guess my question is this, and it's just going to take some time to play out. I think when you lose a game like that and feel that you weren't basically that you didn't maximize your chance to try to win, the immediate crushingness is huge, right? But here's my here's my question that and I don't know if it's going to go away and I think it might cause problems and again if you're a Vikings fan it's glorious. Um it's the accumulation of betrayal he feels. 
which I don't think goes away. So, so like the loss eventually will fade. And if this was the first time he felt screwed, I think he'd be like, yeah, you Oof, know what? Yeah. Grow up. It's fine. I'll be fine. I'll go. I'll be back and I'll be. But the accumulation of, of betrayal of a guy who's this good and say what you want. I know he can be a bit of a jackass at times, but he's that good. Um, I don't know if that's going to fade. And because that's not going to fade, I think there is now, I think every one of these incidents, Phil, goes a step closer to creating a divide that can't be repaired. Yes. And that's the important thing. The other one, too, especially when you stack up all the different things that Tom Brady has had around him since the early 2000s and Bill, Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick wasn't calling man defense with six seconds left in the second quarter of very many football games, big football games, right? We haven't even talked about that in terms of betrayals. Oh, right? there's some games. Be yes. Betrayals can come in yes. the form of drafting your backup slash replacement quarterback. That's a frontal betrayal. I mean, that's literally them saying, we don't think you're going to be good or around for much longer. And we're more interested in investing for five years down the road than we are in investing in the 2021 team. Like that's, that's what they said. That's a frontal betrayal. But I would say like passive betrayals would be you just losing your mind as a defensive coordinator and as a head coach. I think what they were doing at the end of the second quarter was, well, they probably need like five more yards to get into field goal range. And so let's, you know, let's, let's make sure that we're, let's just make sure that we're playing man here. We don't want to go into a full prevent because then they can just get like a 10 yard completion and walk out of bounds and kick a field goal. I don't think they were thinking that Bruce Arians and Tom Brady had the stones, which they do, by the way, at every stop in their careers, they've had the stones to throw a deep pass into the end zone with five seconds to go. And so that wasn't that wasn't Matt LaFleur like frontally betraying Aaron Rodgers, but it was incompetence betraying Aaron Rodgers. Yes, which drives him absolutely crazy. If you're Rodgers and you're sitting there and like, okay, well, I have to overcome Tom Brady. I have to overcome the Bucks being really good. And my defense. I have to overcome the fact that we don't have a first round asset because we wasted it on a backup quarterback. And I have to overcome a ridiculously horrible, fireable in the case of Greg Williams and the Jets a month ago defensive play call mm -hmm. in that situation. And it's just, it's probably, it probably wears you out. And you know what? Brett Favre was worn out too. Well, Brett Favre was worn out and there is a welcoming mat here outside us bank stadium. Yep. If you ever want it, Aaron, it's your destiny. And I was thinking too, I think that star. So, so not good. Okay. I'm going to preface this by saying star quarterbacks. So I'm talking the cream of the crop and, and I don't know why, but they can now play till, 40 or in, in TB's case, 43. Okay. I was th thinking on my drive in, these guys have to start adopting the LeBron approach to life. And that's this screw these contracts, start signing one year Farvinian 2009 and 10. And it worked in 2009. Yeah. Start signing one year contracts, get what you can get, but don't worry about the team. Worry about how good that team's going to be for that that year. Especially start, once you've banked like a hundred million. Uh, exactly. You know? But you know, start sport sports now. And it's unfortunate, but it's the truth. So embrace it. Sports now is not about teams. Sports now is about my opportunity to win a damn title, right? So if you're Rogers, you're now locked in to this contract, and it will come up fairly soon, but it's still locked in. You want you at your age want to be chasing titles and you want to do that as a free agent, not having to be traded in the best locations possible. And guess what? If if the Vikings are going to and they love to do this pop for one year, you want to be here. They do it more than any franchise. And you'd love to shove it down the Packers. How much what how much after yesterday would in like two years, Aaron Rodgers love to be playing the Green Bay Packers oh, in a winner take all type of atmosphere? And not see his coach screw him. And not see his coach uh, say, yeah. oh, but, oh, it's fourth down. <laughs> Aaron, come off the field. We're going to kick a field. No, Think Mike, about Mike, this. Mike Zimmer's got some clock yeah. management work to put into. Okay. So just to here's the agreement. When Here's the, I thought of this. Here's the agreement. When I sign said contract, I am de facto OC. I decide what plays we run. I decide. Pit, it, Pit Manning. If I look up at the clock and I don't like that clock, I call a timeout. And you don't say a word to me. You don't say, what are you thinking? Why did you call that? Right. I am de facto. I, I get my guy to be 
OC and quarterbacks coach. Those are my guys, but I run this show offensively and you are along for the ride. And here's my, if it's Zim, there's only one caveat that I've got. Don't screw up the defense. Yeah. Um, I think I almost feel like other quarterbacks, this is maybe a rip on Rogers. Why didn't he have any say on that fourth and eight, fourth and nine play? I, I don't know because does Tom does Tom Brady walk back to the sidelines with no say? Does, does Peyton Manning in Denver? But here's what's get no weird. Say? Why does he not get a say there? Here's what's really bizarre about the entire sequence. Rogers said specifically, Lafleur allowed him to call the third down play, so that was his play installed basically by him. He should have run by the way. Ran. Yep. Oh, he should have run one hundred. <laughs> Gentlemen, gentlemen, 11 years to the day in the Superdome, Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre, who at one time couldn't stand each other, continue to live parallel existence in different periods of time. Look at where Rodgers could have run. I realize the field position was different, right? Go back and look at those two plays. They both should have run right. And they both, and there is no case against it. And worst case, Rodgers gets caught. But you know where he gets caught? About the three. And they go for it. And they have to go for it. Go, Pat, go! Does anybody know Tom Brady really sucked in the second half? I mean, was I watching the same game? Yeah, you were watching the same. Tom Brady's the go and everything. I'm like... Aaron Rodgers outplayed Tom Brady. Who won? Outplayed Tom Brady. When I, and that's all I'm hearing is who won? Oh, Tom Brady. This. Then Tom Brady. Then oh, sorry, go who I'm won? Sorry. Who won? It, it just seemed like the refs dictated it, and I, I, I feel <laughs> I've been feeling this way for 20 years. And I think the refs they can pick and choose when they want to take over a game. They can do it so easily, and that's exactly what that was. You know, when you have a a three second delay on the flag, is this too? There's too much fishy to it, fishiness to it. I think that, you know, if, if it was legit, Rodgers gets a chance to win that game. Yeah, if it was legit. Right, yeah, right on, John. Yeah, the, re- the referees were the ones. 12 that- men in the huddle. Oh, that must be heartbreaking. Yeah. I can't imagine what that would be like. Off what Judd's been saying God. here about if you're a Vikings fan, this is a glorious day for a bunch of reasons. And and by the way, like, because I've, I've heard this from a lot of Packer fans, too. You should shut up. The Vikings have never done this. We know. <laughs> yeah, we again. know. <laughs> we're fully sense. aware. Doesn't preclude us from also talking about your team, Packers fans. Percentage chance as you sit here and digest everything that happened yesterday and everything that's happened in the Vikings history, looking for the Brett Favre's, Donovan McNabb's, Randall Cunningham's. What is the, give me an honest answer. Percent chance Aaron Rodgers plays for the Vikings before his career is over. 25. And I still think that's pretty low. 25 though. You know what? I think he's going to do this right eventually. Cousins' contract's going to come up at the perfect time. The Vikings aren't going to have an established quarterback at that point in time. I, I believe that it could be a one-year run at a Super Bowl. I'm going to go 35% at least. Yeah. It, it's pretty good. It, I, it, fi- I, it fits I, yeah. in. It just fits in too well. I think it's close to 50. I legitimately think it's I, you know. I think I, it's a coin flip. I mean, think, okay. The only thing stopping him is if if he can't get out... Like the Brett Favre problem was the Packers said, all right, we, I guess we'll, I guess we'll let you go. We'll trade you, but it can't be the Vikings. And so he, there had to be a stop first, the Jets. Sure. I could see that. And so that like, and, and Rogers is 37 now. So if he plays another year in green Bay, we're looking at now his age, probably 40 season before he can. Does that not work out perfect? Listen, I'll be patient. I believe on October 10th, 2009, Favre turned 39. And then I think his last year here, he was 40. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it makes perfect sense. And and the Vikings do this. That That's the thing is, if you had a mountain of evidence that said, the Vikings don't do, do this, here's what they do. But they do this. This is what they do. And where yesterday also, if you're a Vikings fan, is glorious. It brought you one step closer to him being bleep these guys. I'm coming back to get them. Mm-hmm. Quick note on the analytics. So according to ESPN's win probability model, the Packers, when they kicked a field goal on fourth and goal from the nine, 205 left to cut an eight point game to a five point game. The Packers before the field goal had a 10% chance of winning by going for it and a 9.5% chance of winning by kicking a field goal. So what ESPN's win probability model is showing you is like, honestly, it was kind of 
it really didn't make a difference. It's kind of a choose your own crappy adventure. You're you're going to lose the game either way. Sure. Ninety percent of the time. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult to win. Because either way, you're giving the ball back to Brady, either tie game or losing. And I get I get that it wasn't likely that they were going to win the game in either scenario. But the problem in this is coming from the analytics guy, maybe among Minnesota sports media. Like I love the numbers and I'm probably even to a fault more analytics based than than most. What these models don't take into account is the fact that Tom Brady is the quarterback for the Buccaneers in that moment. And Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback for the Packers. These models take all situations, like literally every situation, including backup quarterbacks who are in these situations. And then they create average percentages. Oh my, yeah. And so we're, we're talking about giving the ball back to a guy that never fails in those situations and taking the ball from a guy that's on the Mount Rushmore of great quarterbacks, Oh my God! I which just makes the decision something. even more ridiculous. I just realized something you guys, Yesterday in the NFC championship game, the computers overpowered the humans. It's Terminator. <laughs> Skynet. It's, oh, alive. it's Skynet. Skynet. It's Skynet. They caused the war. <laughs> we allowed them. We couldn't disable them in time. I'm sending Zach Wilson back to the past. This. Go, Pat, go. They should have uh, let Jordan Love play like a taste of heel. Okay. That, the, that that what makes me mad that they draft them in the in the NFL draft and they don't even use them this year. Oh, this is probably the most in 50, 60 years of Washington Packers. This is the most hurtful, disappointing that I even remember. Even the. Uh, third and 26 or whatever that was a few years ago. And now you have the MVP, the greatest quarterback in the history of this sport that we love, and you don't let him go for it on fourth down to win the game. I, I'm just in shock. Some of my friends told me he said he might not be back next year after the game. He said his future, is that right? So we might not have him back next year? So, was, he cry, was, he, was he crying? Yeah, I think I he started know. crying. <laughs> was, was he driving? Because he like, sounds yeah. very drunk. Yeah. Like, is he, he driving home from the it, bar? It sounds like he was driving. I think, I, the guy's name was George, by the way. Courtesy of our friends so on the he's, fan in Milwaukee. So he's driving and crying. Great old band. And and he clearly was drinking before. Driving and crying is the name of a band? That was a band in the 90s, yeah. Interesting. Uh -huh. uh, this, is Bill, this is Bill in Illinois. Hey, we're still better than the Bears. <laughs> That's right on that. Go, Pat, go! Randy in Cottage Grove. How are you doing today? Uh, uh, great. Fantastic. Uh, who was who that, Bill? Bill? Is this a guy before me? Yeah, just a, a, a caller on the Green and Gold post game show in Milwaukee on the oh, fan. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I bet you're not doing too good today, Bill. Uh, <laughs> you know, take a, uh, take a long look. In the mirror, because it's called karma. Hard, hard to disagree. I mean, yeah. you, you draft yeah. Jordan Love in the first round. Would, what do you yeah, expect? You, uh, that was a bozo call. But first of all, he's not even uh, a first round talent. I, I had him graded out in the, the middle of the third. Mm. But uh, yeah. uh, uh, second of all, yeah, you're gonna do that. And and see what would what they say? They was gonna light a fire under uh, old number twelve, uh, Rogers. Mm -hmm. it, I, it well, looks like in the, in the end that fire burned you. You know, I, now you got a guy who is talking about you know, maybe he, he he's done there. Maybe he's done. Maybe he's going to pull a uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Carlos Johnson, Megatron. Maybe he's going to going to retire. You know, who even knows? Yeah, Carlos Johnson, Carlos man. That Carlos was a Johnson was a great receiver. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah, really surprising retirement and, there. And and, he, and out of nowhere, you know, he 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 quit. He up and quit or. Or like, uh, you know, like Favre, you know, uh, you know I, I think Favre uh, is, a, is certainly a more of an emotional guy than than, uh, than Rogers. But uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked uh, at all if uh, Rogers kind of kind of went in there today or, or tomorrow and kind of said, uh, you know, here, I want you to give me my walking papers. You know, I, I, I want you to uh, make a make a trade, find find a find a part dance partner, and uh, get get my ass out of here. You know, he he's he's a Cali guy. A lot of spots he can land. A lot of spots. Yeah, you know, we should ask Randy the same question that we just answered. 
What is the percent chance Aaron Rodgers plays for the Vikings before his career is over in your mind? Uh, uh, you, uh, as far as statistic percent? Uh, yeah, uh, just like what, you know. Yeah, put yeah. a percentage on it, Randy. Yeah, well, uh, you know, 80. Wow. Wow. 85. So, so you, you, think, you think it's almost a certainty that he plays for the Vikings? People talk, okay, and there's scuttlebutt. Uh, in mm-hmm. certain circles, certain text chains and uh, message boards, and I remember when uh, when when the Favre uh, you know sort of a uh, scuttlebutt started kind of leaking around, and I, I was in a tavern uh, in Prescott, which of course is just across into Wisconsin, yeah. and um, and uh, someone said, you know, Favre, Favre ain't happy, <laughs> Favre ain't happy at all, and and that was before the the whole the, the press conference and the crocodile tears and and going to the Jets and all that. It, it, he he wanted out. He did not like uh, uh, Thompson, Ted Thompson, uh, who, uh, who, by the way, looks like Brett got, got, uh, got his wish. He got to leave, you know, he, he got to go to, to the Jets for, for a moment. And then, uh, and then, and then finally he came here and that was the fulfillment of his wish to stick it to the back. So, uh, you know, Rogers may have a similar kind of wish and, 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 and and that's all right. You know, maybe, maybe what they do is they, they, they dump off uh, Kirk in, in a year, cut him loose, you know, cut him loose, just let him walk. And then uh, say, Aaron, it's, it's okay. You, you can come on home, you can come on home and, and, and put on, put on purple and play indoors until you're 50. I'm here for this. He I might like, know. he might like that. I'm all in. Yeah. All in. I'm 50 year old QB. Sure. I'm here for this. Slinging it around. Randy. Yeah, Randy. I'm feeling you on this one, Randy feeling you. If he's got, uh, he's got, if he's, Got the only question is: Does he still have the cannon at the time? And uh, if he if he if he's got it, you know, then then let it fly, let it let let it let it rip. But I can tell you this: Yesterday, watching that uh, uh, that that debacle, if if I if I were, was a Packer fan, I would I would uh, I'd be calling for some heads today. Uh, I don't care how long uh, LeBlanc has been coaching. He that you can't line up. Who you just cannot line up for a field goal LeBlanc. there. The, the Packer coach, the the, uh, the Matt LeBlanc yeah, from Friends, he, Matt LeBlanc. He got a, oh, Matt LeBlanc. He went for the He's field great goal. in Friends. That's nice coach Joey. He went for the field goal uh, uh, down eight. It, it makes no sense. It, either way, you're going to have to come down and get another touchdown. You know, go go for go for the score, go for the score, and then you may not have to come down to get a touchdown. I mean, it just come down and get a field goal, win the damn thing. You know, it, it, it makes no sense. And I'm not even good with math. Okay, I. I, I I, I lean heavy, heavy on a calculator, but this is just simple. You know, you, you do that. You force yourself to have to get a, 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 a come all the way back down the field, Matt. And I hope, I hope today you're taking heat, you know, cause you, you deserve it. And as a Vikes fan, it gives me a lot of pleasure to, to, to watch the backer fans, you know, lo- uh, lose their minds. But, but as a football fan, left a bad taste in my mouth. It really, I mean, it really does. First and foremost, I love the Vikes, but first and foremost, I love football. You know, I really do. And, uh, and, and that, that made me, it, it, it made me un, it unsnugged me. You know, wow. I was excited about that. Never that, heard you unsnugged. That game. And, and then I, I watched that decision. I thought, this isn't a good finish. What are you going to do? You, you, ro- you robbed, uh, the, the football fans of a, of a classic, potentially classic finish. Un, un, it unsnug Randy. I don't. Un-snug. I don't know what I, we've said a lot of a lot of demeaning things about the end of that football game, but I think if it unsnugged Randy and Cottage Grove, well, then if I, you're if you're snug and then you're not, you know. So, like, but believe me, <laughs> these days uh, it's not going to take too long to f- get right back where I need to be because I'm still on the scene. Uh, oh, and, and uh, I'd like to thank whoever it was somebody tweeted my tweet about uh, E Harmony. You're welcome. Yeah, they they gave me if the one of their customer service reps gave me a free month. Wow! Wow! Look at that. And, uh, for, I, so I will be on there for uh, for another month, and then uh, somebody I was talking to told me about a couple of different uh, places I might might even try. So oh really? I, yeah. You Which know, ones? I I got a slip of paper here. Okay. I mean, there's plenty of dating sites out there. Uh, I'm curious. Yeah, one yeah. Uh, one's called OK Cupid. Okay. Uh, this one's uh, plenty of fish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Declan's uh, been on that one a few times. This one is J uh, hmm. J date J date J date. Uh, huh? Randy. Uh, I mean, I didn't know that you were. Uh, I didn't know that you were Jewish, Randy. 
A Jew, uh, excuse me? J-date. Uh, is that what that is? I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a dating I, site I, for, yeah, it's for Jewish, Jewish people. And I, and okay, I, that's fine. I don't, you can be whatever you want to be. I'm just going to fill out a profile and... Uh, We'll see if we met. Farmers only is like, next. I feel like the sp- farmers only for Randy is next. Yeah, move. I feel like you're supposed to be a farmer on farmers only, and you're supposed to be Jewish if you're on J Day. Yeah. What, what does it involve? I'll, I, if, if it's the right gal, I will absolutely switch uh, religions. I'm not very religious anyway. So, and, you know, if if uh, if, if the right the right person comes calling, uh, I'm open. First date. Yeah, I'll switch. Sure. Yeah, maybe some of us on the show should take notes. Easy. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's all about dating is a, a metaphor yeah. about about uh, just life and uh, oh, exercise. God. It's all about flexibility. And uh, you, this is you, so far off the rails. You got to know. You got to know when you go on one of these sites. You know that that your first and foremost number one reason you're on there is to give love, not not to find it, to offer it. And 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 if it comes back to you, that's all right. That's a, it's called a love connection. And and. And, and you guys are going to try to bring down my dating life. I'm not going to do it. I'm in a great spot. I'm in a good, I'm in a good mood. The Vikes uh, are laughing today. Not for long, because we got a lot of work of our own to do. But right now, it is time to focus on mocking. It's time oh. to focus on, on dating. And I'm going to be coming out with some mocks. I'm going to be doing some, you know, some, some really good research here for, for a little bit. I can tell you this right now. If the Packers uh, you know, are drafting another quarterback in the first round, shut it all down. Shut it all down. Oh, I wanted to. I wanted to ask you. You had a follow up there. Yeah, I, I had many follow ups to that. I wanted to know if he brings the mock out on dates. Um, <laughs> it's I, it's best you don't follow up. Uh, okay. I was curious his thoughts on religion in general. You know, like what does he practice so, now? Sounds like he's open minded. <laughs> yeah. To whatever. I realize now the Packers screwed up. They hired Matt LeBlanc. Everybody knows David Schwimmer should have been the preferred coach. Yeah. Actually, if I had to pick a coach from the Friends cast, I'm probably picking Courtney Cox. I'm yeah. picking Monica. Yeah. She's more diligent, organized, competitive. Type A, super competitive. All, Rachel? All, I'm all in. No. No. I want, Monica. Rachel Green is the last person I am picking. Yeah. Super disorganized. Football. Yeah. I'm picking Gunter before I pick Rachel Green wow. to run a football. Well, he was the manager of that yeah, coffee exactly. shop. He, right? he knows how to manage personnel. Appreciate that. Go, Pat, go! He's been the MVP all year long. He's got to make it happen. When you ask your defense to get a stop and they give you one, you've got to cash in on that. Um, I'm going to say something, and I know it's not going to be popular. The hey. Packers should right now trade Aaron Rodgers. Oh! They're turning on him! They're turning on him! Okay. Go, Pat! How do you watch that game? <clears throat> and it gets done. <laughs> <laughs> and you surmise your conclusion off that tilt is that's Aaron Rodgers' fault. Got to trade his ass. How trade do you, his ass. How do you get there? <laughs> like, what's the what happens in your brain where you're like, okay, defense that Kevin King was awful. Um, LaFleur goofed up for sure. The but first two rounds were worthless in yeah. terms of love last year's draft in terms of helping your current team. I saw I saw a tweet last night with the entire uh, draft class from the Packers for 2020, and I believe they had one. I believe Dylan was the only guy who played. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Trade a his backup ass. running back. Trade his ass. Go, Pack! I don't know if many fans are aware of it, but the individual, the wide receiver who was held by Kevin King on the last play, uh, Tyler Johnson, uh, was a fifth-round rookie out of Minnesota. He would have been there in the fourth round for the Packers to select. But, of course, <laughs> Packers used their fourth-round pick to trade up for a quarterback who didn't play today. <laughs> it's, it's so true. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. It finally all came back. Oh, my God. So, wow. There's, by the way, like plenty more space to explore. Cheap plug on Purple Daily too. We've got we've got much more in the bag for Purple Daily, and uh, I think we we like, we've only gone through like half of the Packer vent line clips. I'm almost wondering if we should just like stop doing the show and just let Packer vent line be the rest of the show. I've enjoyed it so far, and we do have statements to get to. There's not been a bad. There's not been a bad one so far. I didn't even watch this game, the second half. I didn't even watch it because I already knew 
Like, I've been watching this football for a long time. When you have a team that's doing stuff that's uncharacteristic for the entire year, I already knew, man. The coaching lost that game. No excuse. Mike Pettin, man covered six seconds out of a timeout. Mm -hmm. Unexcusable. Mm -hmm. He has to be fired tomorrow. If he's not, I'll be so disappointed. <laughs> that guy did, didn't even sound drunk. That guy just sounded no, was angry. legitimately mad. Yep. This game was over from the coin toss when they deferred the ball. He's drunk. Gave momentum to Tampa Bay. They score right away. Takes the Packers out of what they want to do and running the <laughs> Down ball. Down by the bay. And plus, <laughs> at, they gave up a score at the end of the half, and then they gave up a score when it got the ball the third quarter. Makes no sense. We Makes can't sense. ever get four yards on a return. Uh, we need a new special teams coach. We could have had Darren Rizzi, but we were too cheap. I think he probably wanted a million dollars. And I'm going to be really sick if Sean Menanga is back next year. You have a very young coach. We don't know what we have with him. Aaron Rodgers, you put Aaron Rodgers on any team, including the Chicago Bears, and the Bears would look great. Any team would look great if you put Aaron Rodgers on them. It's just a shame that this man is going to waste, and I am just disgusted, guys. Go, Pat, go! That was rational. That last call was really good. Yeah, He's, he's right, exactly man. right. A thousand percent right. He's right. How about that game gets done, and, and instead of blaming the quarterback, you're mad at the special teams coach. Boy, that uh, okay. you know who needs to be held accountable and who needs to be fired today? The special All teams right. coordinator. I got one thing to say to that guy. You haven't lived until you've seen the Marwin Magoofs, okay? <laughs> you think your special teams has problems? Let me show you special teams problems. Go, Pat, go! I appreciate the humbleness with which Coach LaFleur, LaFleur approached the thing after the game. I can only hope that he's learned, he learned a lesson, much like Vince Lombardi famously learned a lesson in 1960. Because he was asked years later, he only lost one championship game. He said, I regretted not taking the points early with a field goal because if I'd had that three, I could have won it at the end without having Chuck Bagneric sit on Jim Taylor. You just can't tell me they're going to make it to the NFC Championship game three years in a row. I mean, you got to strike when the iron's hot. And this, is, this really stings for me, man. I... I don't, I don't know what else to say.